generally the way um, the perceptions uh, are shaped in an election depend on uh, four factors and uh, these are borrowed from the uh, reputation management literature. Uh, the first one is competence, so people want someone who is competent. Second uh, dimension is warmth, so people want to uh, have someone that they can relate uh, to. And the third and fourth dimensions are uh, res uh, respectively transparency and commitment. And so they want someone that kind of uh, uh, make information available uh, to them in a, in a very uh, fast-paced uh, fast manner and they want someone who is committed so this reflects the notions of engagement and so you, you can have a, a sort of prism that captures uh, uh, the dimensions that need to be maximized uh, for uh, that, that a candidate needs to maximize. It's very interesting because in the current uh, situation the, the two candidates uh, kind of, I would say, rate, uh, I've done some, some research on this, uh, kind of are rated equally in the last two dimensions, so transparency and commitment. But what really seems to be the driving forces of their differences is their competence and warmth rating, where we see that uh, Sarkozy, the incumbent president, is, uh, is, uh, scores higher on competence and Hollande seems to be uh, slightly uh, higher, rated higher on warmth. However, it's very interesting because it is in this campaign, um, Olin has been advised uh, to kind of push back a little bit the competence aspect of uh, uh, his uh, personality. And uh, that might be a strategic advantage for Sarkozy because on these two dimensions, you can see that uh, Sarkozy still scores high on perception of competence. And Olin has removed his uh, this, uh, competitive advantage on warmth, and so now it, 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 it uh, results uh, unbalanced. How are uh, the other candidates' positions in this, uh, uh, according to these dimensions? Uh, it's less clear because they haven't had uh, responsibility, they, they haven't been as exposed as uh, the two others, so the ratings are, uh, or the results are um, less reliable. But what we can say uh, is that uh, Mélenchon benefits from a particular aura that comes from his rhetorical art, uh, from his uh, proximity uh, to, uh, uh, to the, the people that kind of would place him uh, probably warmer, I would say, than uh, Hollande or Sarkozy. And on the other hand, uh, uh, Le Pen, uh, Marine Le Pen seems uh, to uh, lack a little bit on all of these, uh, all of these uh, dimensions, competence because she hasn't really um, exerted any responsibilities, uh, warmth because she doesn't uh, seem to convey um, um, an, an, an image of uh, relatedness uh, to uh, people and uh, the, the two others because she hasn't again exerted any responsibility. So her vote is more a vote of people who want to contest the regime and uh, are not necessarily uh, uh, willing to, it doesn't express necessarily a, a foreign political opinion. Regarding the recent crimes that have been uh, occurring in, uh, in Toulouse and Montauban, it seems to be the case that it uh, might be crucial or it might shift people's expectations with respect to competence. Uh, why? Just because uh, they, uh, these, uh, these, these, crime, these crimes require a political leader that uh, scores both on competence, engagement, and so that might require uh, all that requires all the candidates to uh, take actions that uh, that that help them to uh, appear as competent or engaged. So that's why we've seen a lot of uh, them uh, going on sites to express their uh, emotions, and uh, that's why uh, they're uh, probably going to come up with uh, certain measures uh, that would prevent uh, these types of crimes to to occur again, to be repeated. One specific aspect of the current campaign which is uh, interesting is that it seems that uh, candidates don't bring forth 
uh, new propositions on local issues. So there are some propositions with respect to Europe, uh, but there's the uh, general impression that uh, these candidates are uh, unable to come up with new propositions that are tangible and that are uh, operationable in a, on a, a daily basis. And one reason why that might be the case is because we're uh, currently undergoing an extremely uh, strong uh, crisis and so that kind of removes uh, the, the in, again we're still talking about perceptions but it removes in uh, people's mind uh, the uh, idea of the action orientation uh, that leaders can have. It means that in other words uh, that leaders uh, have less of a say in what's going on at the international level and that kind of makes them um, less prone to or less believable when they uh, start uh, argument, you know, they start, start putting forth new, uh, new uh, measures, uh, new propositions.